Say, my mother is the greatest. Just the greatest. 20 years ago, she up and decided that she was going to tour Europe when she retired. Well, she do France, she do England, she do Italy, and she do Ireland. Well, when she come back, no excitement in our house. We were real happy for CR. We were even more happy for see the heap of gifts she come with. <laughs> and we were really happy to see all of the pictures then. Ever since I was small, I just love picture and camera. The woman not even get into the house, good, good, good. And there I was in the lady's photo album. When I was small, I used to trouble her Kodak 126 camera all the time. And Lord, one day I got into trouble because I use of all of my sister Polaroid film then. <laughs> finally, finally, they got me a direct film 110 camera. I just love cameras and picture. Anyway, my dear, I sit down by the front door and I am looking at all these pictures and a sense of pride fill me up when I see my mother in Ireland, in the Guinness factory with a big glass of stout with my sister and some workers. My mother don't drink stout. She uses stout to make Easter bun. But anyways, that was she. Right there and then, I decided I wanted to go to Europe too. I remember when I was leaving high school, a couple of the picnic them say that they were going to tour Europe with a backpack on them back <laughs> and them was going to sleep in hostels. <laughs> when we were growing up, we didn't have those kinds of ideas. If we were to go somewhere, we were going to Jamaica and stay with family. Anyway, who would have thought that I, in all my imagination, would ever dream of going somewhere where I couldn't even speak the people them language? Right there and then. I sit down on that ground and I watch the picture them and I decide I'm not waiting until I retire. When I am 40, I, I am going to go to Italy. To this day, I don't know why I choose Italy. <laughs> 10 years later, I decide I am going to go to Rome. It is Rome that I am going. A couple months before the big 40th birthday, I realized that we never have no money. <laughs> so I couldn't stay in a hotel. So I decide I, me, I, I am going to stay in a convent. So after searching and searching, I find a convent that I could afford. And here what we decide to do it now. I am going to visit my auntie in London. I would stay a couple days with her, and then I would take a cheap plane, and I would go to Rome. Only problem is, I travel all the way to London with a big ratted suitcase. <laughs> Caribbean people, we don't travel light, you know. <laughs> Anyways, my cousin lent me one knapsack. And me roll up everything small, 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 and me stuff it. And my auntie, she fry some chicken. <laughs> my next cousin, she bring me two bags of sultana scones. Not any and any scones, you know. Marks and Spencer scones. <laughs> we Caribbean people, we fussy. If we're going to have anything from London, it must be Marks and Spencer, because that is what we grow up on. So anyway, my child, 
on the 14th, I, with my knapsack, found my way to the Luton Airport and off to Rome. My child, I me fit tell you. First thing, is the first, first time I ever get on a plane and don't check a suitcase. The second thing is the first, first time me ever go somewhere with a knapsack on my back. <laughs> and third of all, I have never been anywhere inside of this world and don't know the people them language. I am accustomed to come off the plane and there is family to greet me, or I just jump in a taxi and go which part me I go. My love, I arrive in Rome with three Italian words. Buongiorno, <laughs> buonanotte, <laughs> and grazie. All I had was a piece of paper with the name of the convent on it. Could you imagine my frustration to find the right door to come out? Eventually. Eventually, me find a taxi stand. And I find the taxi man will understand the piece of paper. I had my money in my breasts, some in my panty, and some in my shoes, because I hear they have plenty of muggers out there. I'm not even in the taxi five minutes and the taxi man look for me and he'll tell me 20 euros. Now, I know is Rob the man was robbing me, <laughs> but I did so glad to reach that I pay him the $20 and I come out. Well, I never glad to go into a church like that. And thank you, Jesus, for the fried chicken and the scones. The room inside the convent did have a coffee maker. So, me draw a cup of tea, me heat up the scones on the coffee maker, and melt little butter, and with the strawberry jam, I eat my scones. Now, I notice that the convent did howl. And if it is a convent, it must have rats. <laughs> Nobody like a me afraid for rats. So I decide to make a fridge. When me do, me take a plastic bag, I gather up all the food in the plastic bag, and knot it, and then I put it in between the balcony doors then. That way my chicken would be cold, and the rats wouldn't come inside of my room. So after my belly full now, a piece of bravery descended on me. And I decided that I am going to go to the Coliseum. Well, I'm feeling big. This is living. I could see the Coliseum up ahead with all the winding roads, with road leading to one road, and I follow all the roads, and then I see the Colosseum up close. The whole good problem is, me couldn't figure out how to cross the road. <laughs> because the only thing I could hear in Rome is, ee, ee, one set of people on moped. I don't know what I was afraid of. The mopeds or all of the muggers that everybody told me about. <laughs> Finally, me see one little man. And me follow right behind him, close, 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 and across the street. When I reached the Coliseum, one of the guards them called me. And this is where I learned my fourth word. Him say, excuse me. And before I even know what could have happened, the man started to feel up my neck and feel up my breast. It happened so fast I couldn't even get backs with him. In fact, I think I blushed. <laughs> could you imagine if somebody did try that here in Montreal with me? I would have thumped them down. <laughs> anyway, after the Coliseum, 
I watch across the street. And when me look, I see one set of laneways to go back up. I never marked the laneway, wish to go back up. So I say, make me cross back the street. When I cross the street, I decide, okay, pick one. They must all go to the same place. Two twos from that, the place turned dark. And I don't recognize one thing. I see a sister, a sister, and I'm showing her the paper with the convent on it. She start to bubble and wave her hand, and she fan me off. I then say, okay, let me continue. Because you know, when you're by yourself in a strange country, you talk to yourself. So I continue to go up and up, and I start to wonder if I did pass all of them shops when I was coming up. Anyway, I, I, I start to fret, I start to panic, and then I see two more people, they were American tourists, but them did lost too, so I didn't bother with them. <laughs> well, now it's afraid, me afraid, until finally me see one little old man, and I show him the paper, with the convent, and thank you, Jesus, the whole man walked me straight to the convent. As I said, I never glad to reach inside of a church. <laughs> well, when I go in my room, I bathe off, and I decide, say, okay, let me turn on the cell, and what I would do, I would wait for all of the emails in to load up, and I would read them, and I would fall asleep. Well, the moment I turn on the phone, the phone start to ring. Well, I frighten, because if you never know quiet, try being in a convent late at night. <laughs> so I turn it on, and it was mommy. Well, me start to fret now, because me think say, something happened to her. But no, my mommy just wanted to know if I was safe, and if the doors had a lock. I say, mommy, if I am in Massa God Convent and I cannot be safe, I cannot be safe anyway. Anyway, mommy, I love you and good night because I start to fret on the long distance bill. <laughs> this time now I am in my pajama and I don't feel sleepy, so I decide to walk around the convent. The convent is dark, dark, dark. I'm a spy a little staircase going up. So me decides that me gonna go up there too. And when me go up there, me reach the top, I see a door with a window. When I look through the window, I see that it was a, a roof. About the same time, I start to get a nick fit. So I say, no harm if I teeth a little thing. So I take off my shoes, and I catch you open the door, and I went out on the roof. And as I watched the lights of Rome, a thief, a little puff puff. <laughs> now, selfies didn't exist in them days. But I wonder today if my children and their children would be inspired to just tour the world on a dime. I don't know, but all the same, whenever I think of Rome and I think of the lights, I remember the little puff puff on top of the convent.